Thank you for joining us here on windserve2.com this week. Uh, this week I wanted to bring you a video based on, um, kind of I decided to make it on, a, on an article that I read. Uh, it's one of, based on one of the security uh, blogs that I read. And um, I'll just bring this up. So the register had an article uh, and it talked about Java and Adobe vulnerabilities blamed for Windows malware mayhem. And it said basically five products essentially by these two companies, Adobe and Java, um, were used in about 99.8% of hacks. So, you know, I can't vouch for the validity of the study and, you know, the, the statistical accuracy and things like that. I'm imagining that it's fairly accurate, else they wouldn't make the claim. But even let's say if they're half right, and Adobe and Java products were the vector of injection for half of the known attacks. That is a huge, um, that's a huge group of opportunity that we have there to remove vulnerabilities from our network. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to do an app locker tutorial so that we can literally lock out Adobe and Java products from our Windows network. Now this could be controversial. Um, so if you needed a Adobe Reader, you could use a reader like Foxit, which comes with a safe mode enabled by default. And um, that way, the safe mode in that version of the PDF Reader stops any extra arbitrary code execution. Um, now, obviously, your employees won't be able to play Farmville on Facebook at work if they don't have the Adobe Flash Player installed, and that might cause some upheaval, but a lot of times as IT administrators, we have to play the bad guy, and I am perfectly okay with that. Um, also, Java, you know, it is supposed to be designed with this sandbox mentality um, in mind, but in all actuality, it has been found to be incredibly weak and incredibly vulnerable. So, you know, if we can um, eliminate this volume of threat in our network, if it is really not needed to use the Java framework, if it is not needed to use the Adobe specific PDF reader, if you could limit your general users to a third party reader like Foxit, I think that could really add a value and, and be a free. Um, the way within your IT infrastructure to reduce your uh, security vulnerability. So I will say that the requirement for this app locker is that you either have a Windows 7 Ultimate or Enterprise um, version of their desktop operating system. And as you can see here, I've pulled down a uh, Windows 7 Enterprise version. So we're going to actually go through this whole process, set this up, and then I'll prove to you. You see you have an Adobe package here and a Java install package here, and it will not let me install or run these packages, period. So let's just get rid, uh, right into the video. Um, we're going to be dealing with a couple things. We're going to be dealing with our group policy manager um, that we've been working with the whole time. And you know, like I've said, if you don't know group policy, you don't know Windows. So take time to learn group policy. It's dreadfully important. And as you can see, we have our accounting group here. We have our Win7 Enterprise Workstation. And you can just see it's a member of our domain local group for that resource. We'll just actually apply our group policy in this case to everything in our accounting organizational unit because we don't want anybody uh, in the accounting organizational unit to have the power to override this. So this will just tell you where we're going to be working. Obviously, um, let's say you have some some clients or some some customers or internal customers that they don't have as sensitive of data. Maybe you would want to restrict this, but personally, I would keep it out of the whole network if I had the choice. So, um, so what we're going to be doing here is we see that we have a a policy called accounting win seven clients again you could name this whatever you'd like to name it just give it a descriptive name and we are it's bare right now it's so we're just gonna go through and we're going to edit we're gonna edit this policy and where we are going to be working there's actually two things that we need to do to make sure that this works properly in our environment we need to make sure that the application identity service is running so the first thing that we're going to do 
is we are going to make sure that in our group policy so users can't circumvent this um, you know or unless they they go in and manually disable it uh, and we could that could be taken further that we are actually going to go in under system services and now you see here that we have all these different services that should be defined or that can be defined now if you are in a very high secure environment maybe you would monitor this service on your workstations to make sure that nobody has turned it off so they could then install um, the software so basically we are going to define this policy setting and just again that path is under computer configuration policies Windows settings then down in security settings and then you'll see the system services option there so what we're going to do is we are going to define this and we are going to define it to start up automatically and we're going to click apply okay and if you follow along in the next video about um, not running users as local administrators on the system you can prevent them from modifying these settings so um, so we're gonna set this so now we have this uh, dependent Windows system service set up and now it's really quite easy to go through and configure app locker so we're just gonna stay in the same group policy area and as you can see just a little bit down from system services there is application control policies We'll just let this populate, give it a second. Okay. And under here we have App Locker. Now you can do a lot of different things with App Locker. So let's say that you are you have Adobe products or you have Java products installed in your environment, but you don't want a subset of your users to be able to execute those maybe they're not as well educated users or if you have a security training initiative going on um, and you are doing testing you know you're sending out spear phishing emails and you're seeing if you can get your users to click um, and go to pseudo dangerous websites for your testing process let's say that these users who have not responded responsibly to your training you could actually say well we know that the software is installed so you can see here this is a Windows installer rule so we know that the software is installed but we are going to stop it from executing so this may be a way that you can more finely finely control what's on the system versus who can execute um, items on the system in this particular video we are just going to make general executable rules so anything from Adobe or from Java will simply not be allowed to execute period um, this is my preferred way to do it so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna click anywhere in the screen and we're gonna do create new rule Okay, just give that a second so just go here next now you can see here we have allow or deny permissions so in this case we're going to deny and again you could select you know what users you could go in here and, and select different user groups that you would like to allow or deny um, the, the running of the application for the purpose of this demonstration we're just going to select everybody so next and what we are going to do is we are going to select a publisher in this case I am worried about Adobe um, and Java so we are going to select publishers now what you'll see here is it will ask you to browse for a file so I'm going to go to the, my desktop where I have my Adobe and Java file and I'm gonna click this Adobe uh, Acrobat Reader 10 and you see that you have custom values here so let's say we know we would have brought down the Adobe Flash installer so instead of Adobe Reader installer this would have been the Adobe Flash installer so we won't we don't want anybody to install it you could see it's broken down by file version file name and right at the top here it's Adobe systems so let's say you didn't want the flash player installed but you wanted the flash um, or I'm sorry the Adobe reader you could actually fine grain control this so or you could just do the opposite so any publisher anything that Adobe produces I don't want it installed and that's just for the purpose of this demonstration what we're gonna do so um, let's say because we're gonna replace it with Foxit so all of Adobe products are banned 
Now we have what's called an exception. Okay? And in this particular case, we would be able to go in and we would be able, be able to add like a specific product based on what we use from the company and what we have not found a viable alternative for. You could then again go through this whole process and say, well, we know that this version of Adobe Flash Player is a bit more secure. Like maybe some people will like the Adobe version Reader 9 versus 10. So you could say, we're going to allow the Adobe version 9 to be installed, but not Adobe version 10. So I hope that kind of gives you a picture of how you can finally tune this sort of implementation. But again, for this demo, we're going to block all Adobe products. So we're going to go next. We're not going to add any exceptions here. And we could give it a description, but we know what it is for the sake of this argument. Please do document your environment. Uh, and we are going to create this policy. Now what it's going to do is it says the default rules are not on the rule list. So we are going to create these. You'll probably want to do that. And so what this is going to do, this is going to allow people to execute rules out of the programs folder and out of the windows folder um, and the built in administrator. They're going to be able to access all files. So again, your local user should not be running under the administrative context. But as you can see here, everyone is denied this Adobe Systems rule. So this kind of looks like the Windows firewall settings, if you're familiar with that. And so now we have Adobe in here. And now if we want to add to this blacklist, and I do understand this is a blacklist. This is not a whitelist, so that could be argued in a later video. Um, but if we're going to create a new rule, and let's say this time we're going to add Java. So we're going to deny, and we're going to oh, going to go to the next page. And we're going to, again, go by Publisher. And going to go back to the desktop here. And this time, I'm going to pick this Java installer. And as you can see here, again, we are going to block the entire Java platform. So we are, let's say we are a power plant or something like that. And it's very, very important that we keep our environment secure so we can block the Java the Java platform and the Adobe platform so what we're going to do here is we're going to simply close this out and then we are going to come over here and we are going to link an existing GPO and we have that accounting win7 client group policy object okay and it is to all the authenticated users here and do remember that under the details for D GPO status we do know that all of the GPO settings that we applied in this group policy was in the computer configuration section so do remember when you're applying these you know disable user configuration setting disabled and it will help speed up your GPO processing so do keep that in mind it is it is pretty important so we're gonna close this out here and then I'm not sure if we're going to have to GP update if we're going to have to reboot the workstation, but we'll we'll see. I'm just going to let this. We're going to force an update of group policy. All right, and we will force an update of group policy on our workstation. And we can do GP result to see if, in fact, this applied or if we will have to reboot. Okay, so the um, accounting win seven client policy did apply. So I might have to log off here just to be, oh, well, let's just try it. Hey, you never know. So let's click this and try to install it. Yep, looks like we're going to have to reboot. So I'll reboot this and I'll bring it back to the, uh, I'll close that out because we don't want it. I'll bring it back to the video here.
Okay, so we're finished rebooting here. I'm going to log back in. And we should be good to go. Let's just make sure that our service is running. So the application identity service, it is running. And let's try to fire off this Adobe Reader install. Okay, so this is what we would expect. Um, when in doubt with Windows, reboot. So the program is blocked by group policy. For more information, contact your system administrator. All right, so let's see what we ha happens when we install the Java option. And the same thing. This program is blocked by group policy. For more information, contact your system administrator. So this will, and I'm not following my own advice here, but I, I'm actually logged in with an enterprise administrator on this workstation. And as you can see, because the group policy is applied to all authenticated users, um, and this system is, this workstation is in the accounting organizational unit, um, it will even stop enterprise admins from making these modifications in these changes to systems now I will give you a word of caution it is not recommended that you apply these types of policies on your domain if you misclick um, and let's say you don't create the default rules or you don't select a windows path or certain things like that this can kind of wreck havoc in your environment so always be sure again we've emphasized many many times always test these sort of policies in your lab to see what sort of effect they will have on your environment and be very very precise with these sort of controls um, that's another reason why you may want to only apply uh, your policy to a group we could actually go through and instead of applying to all authenticated users we could use group policy to apply this I can just show you here we would add d counting so our domain users and remember in, in the previous video I showed you how to apply the group policy object just to a specific group instead of authenticated users so take a look at that video if you uh, if you don't remember anyway I hope this um, video will be very very helpful for you in protecting your organization um, I hope that you know if you do have the opportunity to use the enterprise version of Windows 7 this is a Windows 7 um, deal maybe with Vista I'm not sure um, but it can really help secure your network so again I hope you enjoyed the video please do stop by winservetoots.com and again submit any ideas for videos that you would like to see um, the next video that we will probably do will be to um, automate putting your domain security groups into their corresponding local security groups for example if you have an accounting um, domain group uh, accounting users domain group how you could put that into just the generic users group in Windows 7 so just to give you a little teaser there again thank you for stopping stopping by this week and thank you for visiting winservetoots.com